Okay, get your paper and your ball to hit the ground at the same time. A common activity to do when discussing gravity. The uncoupled paper is held up by the air around it. If we change the shape to be similar to the ball, we can get them to fall at the same rate. The crumpled paper can move more easily through the air. It now has less surface area for the air to resist. These objects were difficult to get to fall at the same time. It seems to go against Galileo's discovery. Actually, Galileo realized that air can affect the way an object falls. So he said objects pick up speed at the same rate, regardless of weight, when gravity is the only force acting on it. When objects falling towards the Earth, they may have different speeds. This is because the air resists the fall of objects, and those that are lightest res with respect to the size will be the most effective. Here is a book and a piece of paper. The book weighs much more than the paper, and when they're released, the book hits the ground first. But if we put the paper on top of the book so that the air pressure under the book can't affect and resist the fall of the paper, the two objects fall together. Objects in a vacuum where there's no air or other gases present would fall at the same speed. Most of the universe is made up of the vacuum of space. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon? And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Wow, Mark, that proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. An object is in free fall only if gravity is pulling it down and no other forces are acting on it. Because air resistance is a force, free fall can occur only where there is no air. Skydivers are often described as being in free fall before they open their parachutes. However, that is an incorrect description because air resistance is always acting on the skydiver. Check out this Discovery Channel video that discusses a skydiver's fall and introduces the term terminal velocity. When a skydiver jumps out of a plane at 3,000 meters, her speed goes through some big changes. So what's happening to the forces as you fall through the air? The force of gravity is always trying to pull us towards the Earth. Before the skydiver jumps, the floor of the plane provides a counterforce, which balances the downward force of gravity right up until the moment she steps out. Gravity immediately pulls her towards the ground, and she starts to accelerate downwards. But air resistance is acting in the opposite direction, the faster she falls, the greater the air resistance. Eventually, the upward force of the air equals the downward force of gravity. When forces are balanced, the speed remains constant. That doesn't mean she stopped falling. It means she stopped accelerating. She's still doing a steady 55 meters per second, and hitting the ground at this speed isn't a good idea. To slow down, the upward force needs to be greater than the downward force. When the parachutes open, air resistance suddenly becomes much greater than gravity. The forces are no longer balanced, and this changes her speed. She slows down. Because she's slowing down, Air resistance decreases until it balances gravity again, and she reaches a much slower constant speed. A 
approaching the ground at five meters per second is a much better idea. As she hits the ground, there's a thumping great counterforce from the Earth, which decelerates her very quickly. So for skydivers to land safely, they need to understand forces and use air resistance to slow themselves down. Okay, we're going to discuss a little bit more about the skydiver and the speed of a falling object and how it increases and how the air resistance in turn will increase as well. So if we look at the initial fall of the skydiver, we see that gravity is pulling the skydiver down and air resistance is going to be low. We see that gravity is greater than air resistance and the net direction will be down. The object's going to quickly gain velocity and start falling faster and faster. And as they do that, they're going to encounter more and more air particles or air resistance, and that's going to affect their fall. Uh, the upward force, which is the air resistance, is going to continue to increase until it ends up in mid-fall becoming equal to the downward force of gravity. The net force is going to end up being zero because both forces are equal and they cancel each other out. The object's going to stop accelerating at this point. It doesn't mean that the object's going to freeze in the middle of the air, but it's going to stop going faster and faster. Uh, its terminal velocity has been reached. And just to kind of get it in our notes, terminal velocity, the definition is the constant velocity of a falling object when the force of air resistance is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force of gravity. So both of those arrows, the red and the yellow, are going to be equal, and that's how you know that you've reached terminal velocity. A skydiver actually looks at her accelerometer that's usually around her waist, and she could see that her needle for her velocity is going to stay at that constant speed. So that's how she knows she reached terminal velocity. And we'll go through this a little bit more during class. And then we know that the object's going to continue to fall, but at a constant velocity, and they're not going to speed up anymore. They're not going to get faster and faster. Once she hits terminal velocity, that's when she knows that she needs to pull her parachute. So gravity is going to stay the same in all, and throughout the whole um, the fall, gravity is going to stay the same. So notice my red arrow is the same size every time. But once they pull that parachute, air resistance is huge. Um, you're catching all this air, trapping all this air. So air resistance is going to be greater than gravity. The net direction is going to be up, and the object's velocity is going to slow down drastically. And this is going to help the skydiver um, able to land. They're going to land around 5 meters per second, which is much more doable than probably the 55 meters per second that they were once going in the middle of their fall. We're going to discuss more about terminal velocity, and we're going to draw another picture of a skydiver when you come to class. But thank you very much for watching. There's a couple of um, questions that I want you to answer, but I appreciate your attention.